I've opened the Q&A session, so you can hit star six if you have a question or a gain or you want to work on something. But I'd also like to apologize. It, it looked like we had a technical glitch in the middle of this, and suddenly two-thirds of the people were knocked off the phone call. So I hope that wasn't you. Um, we're back up to normal. So, okay, we have three people in the queue. Let's try Tara and cro cross our fingers that, that we have a good sound quality here. Good evening, Tara. Good evening, Stephen. How are you? Oh, I'm so happy to hear you this time. I'm doing fine, thank you. I couldn't wish you for your birthday on last Thursday. A very happy birthday for you. <laughs> thank you. We we all knew that that was your heart's desire, and we just I just thank you so much, Tara. I want to but thank you so much for the course, Stephen. We I love your wisdom, and thank you for sharing all these wonderful secrets with us. Mm, you're very welcome, and I, believe me, you will pull them out of me. I. I I find myself marveling at what's what's come out. It's just glorious. So thank you very much. Right back to you. It's wonderful. And can I ask you a dumb question? Yes, I love I love it. The dumber the lover, the, the more I love it. Okay. There's a little before I ask the question. There's one comment I want to make. A little store in Fairfield, like a home improvement store. Yes. And uh, there's a little board, this little poster at the back that says. Please do not be afraid to ask dumb questions. It's easier <laughs> to deal with dumb questions than with dumb mistakes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I, I asked the man in the store, who wrote that? He said, when we bought the store, it came to the store. So I said wow. to him, just for that, out of, just for that, out of bought the store. <laughs> Well, who knows? That might have been the original store owner. The building was probably built in, you know, 1910, 1915, something like that. Yeah, it could so be very you know old wisdom. Store. Yes, you know all right. Store, right? I do, yes. It's, it's, I know Rosie, yeah. So, so the question I wanted to ask you is, I do, uh, I follow all your suggestions. Uh, you know, the breathing and getting the aura to be, get really big, your and then you know the MS becomes a little speck and you sort of blow it away. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yes. I just wanted to ask you. Okay. Can, did you hear, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, my question was, how long will it actually take for the MS to go find its own space in the place in the universe? So how long would it take for what to what? Uh, you know, you said. You know, did you hear what I said, or should I repeat, no, I, 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 yeah, re repeat the question, please? Yeah. You said uh, I follow your, you know, all your your suggestions and do a bit of breathing and get your astral body to become really huge, and then the MS becomes a speck, and then you sh you blow it away into the universe. Can you hear yes. me? Yeah. So you know, in times where I've had I've had okay, okay, go ahead. My question was, how long will it actually take for the MS to go and occupy its own space in the universe? How long does it take for the energy to... How long would it take for the MS? Oh, for the, the MS, MS, for the multiple sclerosis. Ah, so that's a brilliant question. <laughs> yes, dumb? no, it's not dumb at all. So let me ask you... Let me ask you. I mean, you're asking me because your mind doesn't have an answer, right? Yes. Yeah. So, would it be okay with you if you let go of asking your mind for that answer? Okay. Okay? Yes. And honestly, do you really think my mind has an answer? I don't know. It might, you know. You yeah. seem to know everything. <laughs> So, let let me, uh, you know, here's my answer to that, and I'll, I'll take you into it by experience, but my answer to it is, my mind doesn't know, everybody's different, and let's go inside and see if the answer is there, okay? 
Okay. Okay. So you notice notice when you ask a question like this that the mind doesn't know that you actually you know, the mind sort of calls you dumb. Because it says, you know, that's a dumb question, right? Yeah, yeah, I thought the question was dumb. Well, yeah, you, right. You know? so, so that's your mind telling you you're dumb, telling you how stupid of you to ask a question like that. So would it be okay with you? To, and does that get you the answer, by the way, when your mind tells you you're dumb? No. No, my no. mind doesn't tell me I'm dumb. My mind tells me the question is dumb. Right. But you're asking the question. It's a dumb question. That's right. That's true, yeah. Okay, so there's some element of, you know, beating ourselves up when we keep going back yeah. to that empty filing cabinet. Got it. Got it. So could you let go of disapproving of yourself? Yes. Could you let go some more of disapproving of yourself? Yes. That's good insight. Yes. Yes. And could you let go some more of disapproving yes. of yourself? Yes. Yes. And do you find yourself disapproving of your MS? Yes. And has that made the MS go away? No. No, it hasn't. Would it be okay with you if you let go of disapproving of your MS? Your MS. Yes. And could you let go some more of disapproving of your MS? Yeah. And even still more. Yeah. And even still more. Yeah. And still more. Yeah. And would it be okay with you since beating yourself up, disapproving of yourself, and the disease did not solve it? if you try something new and just gave yourself some love and approval? Yeah. Yeah. Could you give yourself some more love and approval? Yeah. And more. Yeah. And could you give, just because it feels good, could you give your multiple sclerosis some love and approval? Yeah. And more love and approval? Yeah. And more love and approval. Yeah. And do you notice that when you let go of being negative and beating yourself up, move into being positive and loving, that you become lighter, quieter, and easier? Yeah. Yes. And are you more likely to get an answer to your question with an agitated mind or with a quiet easy mind. Yes. So would it be okay with... I'm not even seeking an answer now, actually. So you are or are not? I'm not. I'm not even seeking an answer now. Would it be okay with you if you allowed that answer to show up in its own time? Yes. Yes. Could you let go of wanting to control when that answer comes? Yeah. Would you allow the vast intelligence of the universe to give you that information at the right time? Yeah. Yeah. And every time you start wondering how long it's going to be, would it be okay with you if you gave, if you let go of disapproving of yourself for not knowing and you Instead, give yourself some love and approval and move back into this quiet place. Would that be okay? Yeah. And if this, this wanting, this longing to know becomes a tool for you to access your silence 24-7, can you see what a gift this is to you? Yeah. Yeah. So could you just love yourself for wanting to know this? Yeah. Yeah, this is this is a tool, a 
place, a way for you to move into your true nature. Okay? So, how are you feeling about your MS right now? Uh, I, I'm feeling better. I'm feeling better all around. The last time I spoke to you, I was in a sort of a not a very happy place. I right. had a lot of worries and fear. I'm yeah. so much better now. And that's a gain, I think. You know, doing your breathing and following yeah. your suggestions for breathing. Yeah, good. So I feel so much better and lighter. Okay. Thank you. All right, Tara. Yeah. Always I a pleasure. That, see, that's why I asked the question. I knew yeah. you'd have a solution. You have a solution to every question. <laughs> You're very kind. <laughs> and right. I want to thank you so much because the poll finishes on Friday, right? Yes, poll session on Friday. Yeah. Yes. So in case I don't get a chance to speak again, I want to thank you so very, very, very much. Ah, thank you, Tara. Thank you very much. God okay. bless you in abundance. God bless you. I'm going to go to the next person in the line here. So this will be area code 319. Good. 319, you're in, th in the queue. Hello? I didn't think I would jump in line because you mentioned there were four people. But anyway, yes. it's Carrie. Hi, Carrie. Um, two questions. The first one is you mentioned that this, uh, you know, like doing today's meditation, could take a long time to see results. I'm wondering what your uh, suggestions are for us to uh, be doing this like on a daily basis. Is um, how would so, how, how would we go about doing that? You know, everyone's different in their capacity. Mm -hmm. um, but I would, you know, I, I would do, you know, just to throw it out here. I do five, five, ten minutes of heart rhythm meditation in the beginning, and then in you know, I do five, ten minutes of this particular breath. If 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 the throat is your issue, or if other areas are is or your issue, but uh, it doesn't it doesn't take like hours. I, I wouldn't suggest hours. Mm -hmm. And um, and in the sense of, of covering so many things, topics is just go back to one of the recordings to get the um, yes. the technique right for the solar plexus. Yes, and then, um, and then just put that into whatever, right. whatever daily routine works for you. Right. You know, listen. Um, I'll tell you, a very powerful practice would be to do like, you know, f f three or four minutes, or maybe five minutes of each one of these four that we've just done. It takes twenty minutes. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Um, the second question is. Um, Basically, going through the release process on your own. Any any suggestions on how to do that, or is it um, always sort of always better to have someone take you through a release? No, no, no. The the intention really is for everyone to learn to be able to do this themselves. So, um, well, there's a couple of things people can do because I've I've had this emailed to me a couple of times what to, what to do, how to, how to go forward. Uh, the release technique, an organization sells books and tapes. They also have live workshops. So that's a, a really good route. The abundance course is a very good introductory course. If you live in Fairfield, it's easy to borrow it for free. Um, at least when we were meeting every Saturday. You know, how, there's a, a library at, at Hal Goldstein's office that people can just borrow these things from, or there's just friends around that have them. If you're out in the, around the world, you know they're not that expensive. You probably just have to buy them, or maybe talk to someone who can make copies for you, something like that. But I would, you know, the way I got started is I went through that abundance course six times. I was back when it was a cassette. 12 cassettes I was broke and uh, my world just changed from it job came in nice job um, you know I was just doing it about an hour a day I'd, I'd, and uh, go through them one time you know 
you know, and the next told another two weeks later, I'd do it again like that. So I, I'd I'd suggest that, and you just learn how to do it. I'd strongly suggest if you have the funds to take, the, you know, when when the least technique gets back to doing their live courses to do those, and if you live in Fairfield, and we get past this social distancing thing, you know, I'll, I'll do I'll do occasional classes, and and they just happen around town, and you just learn how to do them. Really, and get with a partner and start releasing back and forth. See what comes up. So, All right. Great. So, Thank Carrie, you so I guess you love your yeah. mind, don't you? You want to figure things out. Okay. More than everyone, you need to. More than you need to. Is it okay with you <laughs> if you moved from your mind down into your heart? Yes. It's okay with you. I, you have. I know you. You have a great heart, Gary. You have a really great heart. And I'll tell you, just for feedback for you, when you get up into your head, I get bored. When you get down into your heart, I just would kiss the ground you walk on. You have that impact Thank on you. me when, when you're in your heart. Okay. So let me ask that question again. Is it okay with you if you make this 16, for few it's probably an 18 inch journey from your head into your heart? Yes. Could you allow it to be safe for you to live in your heart? Yes. Do you have any resistance to that or is that an easy thing to say? There's resistance. Yeah, can you feel that resistance? Is that resistance helping you? No. No. Would it be okay with you if you felt that resistance and just loved it? Yes. It's there to protect you, right? Yes. Yeah. So would it be okay with you if you just love this resistance and allowed it to just know that where you're going can be completely safe? Yes. Is it all right for you to be safe without your resistance? Yes. Yes. Is it okay for you to be safe and live in your heart. Yes. And could you make that decision again? It's okay to be yes. safe and live in your heart. Yes. Now, does the resistance come up when you say it now, or is it pretty peaceful? Uh, there's less resistance, um, and my mind says it's not going to go away in 30 seconds. Okay. And. That voice in your mind, in progress. right, that voice in your mind, okay, because historically you hold on to that, don't you? Yes. Okay. And so there's some truth to it, practically speaking. And does it always have to be that way? No. It doesn't, does it? Would it be... A, a possibility for you that your body mind system and your heart recognize that who you are as a spiritual being is much bigger than this resistance and this wound yes yeah and that becomes okay for this resistance to dissolve quickly. Yes. It can be safe for this resistance to dissolve quickly. Yes. So, Carrie, I'm going to let you work on this alone with a friend, with your wife, maybe. But whenever you feel like, oh, this is never going to leave, I want you to welcome that feeling up 
and just love it. It'll put you in your heart and begin the development of moving you into your heart 24-7. Okay? So this can actually be a great tool for you. Right now it's a burden, I know. Is it okay if you shift this perception into that of being a great opportunity? Yeah, Something that's always the at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, nice. Can you let that light get brighter? Yes. And bigger. Yes. And bigger still. Yes. Yeah. Can you step into that light, Carrie? Yes. And what's your experience when you step into that light? Right now, hesitation, but peace. I'm and sorry, could you say that it. again? Could you say that again? There's, there's slight hesitation, and there's peace in that light, and I'll work so, on it. Good. So yes. they're both there together. Yes? yes? Is it okay with yes. you if they stay there together? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I hear that as you're saying you've gone far enough this morning. Yeah. Okay. So just keep that up, Carrie. And I'm going to hold you as the man who's always living in his heart and who's very dirt that he stepped on, I want to touch. Okay? Okay. I'm very, I'm very serious there, Carrie. You, you are huge in your heart. You have that. And I just can't wait to see that come out in its full expression. Thank you. All right. Thanks very much. Okay. Let me see... Okay, area code 215, good morning. Hi, Stephen, good morning, it's Bobby from Philadelphia. Hey, well, hello to Philadelphia, and you. Hi, and hi. What a, um, geez, what a wonderful, loving Corona. Corona. <laughs> I'm kind of blissed out, I'm kind of blissed out. Um, just the, the, to the topic tying into the throat chakra, um, what's coming up for me right now, which is I'm really welcoming it, um, being in release with these other courageous beings, is sadness. Um, it was a big I don't, don't speak, don't talk in my family when I was young, and I grew up in a very conservative, um, Republican, um, strict household, and uh, I'm just having, I'm just pulling up pictures to heal. Right now, in the time of Corona, um, the virus of when you know when do I want to stay separate or be in judgment? And there's a real feeling of when I would speak or, tr or want to speak up when I was young. I, just so much fear of being judged and wanting to be separate from that energy that I was in and all the belief systems um, growing up. So I just want to I just want to <laughs> go into the heart and release that, and so I can be more loving in what's happening in the world, <laughs> so I nice. can still feel that fear of judgment. Wanting to yeah. keep me separate and my pride that I'm better than, you know, is so, really up. Yeah. Wonder, thank you for bringing this up because it's a huge way to heal the wounds in the throat is yeah. to just directly release them. Okay? Yeah. So, is it okay with you if we go back to an early memory of your parents shutting you down and not letting you speak? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's good. good. How old are you? Oh, geez. Like seven, eight. Seven, eight. You're a, a young kid, full of energy, full of life, wanting to sp speak out, and your parents keep shutting you down. Right. Right. So how did you feel when that happened? Really scared and remember going into, like, a numb state. Like, yeah. my, just all, just clogged all those chakras right up. So good. So can you welcome up that numb state right now? Yes. Yeah. And that fear, I think you said fear. Yeah. Yeah. Can you welcome it up and just be with it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. You, 
you can do that so freely because it's in there already, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And really, it wants to be healed, doesn't it? Yes. That's why it's showing up right now. So the best way to heal it is to love it. Yes. Yeah. So can you see that as a seven-year-old girl, that was a very normal and reasonable response to your parents? Yeah. That's, that's, how you, that's how you allowed yourself to be safe. Yeah. Yeah. So can you love yourself for doing the best job you could when you were seven? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And could you give yourself some more love and approval? Yeah. And more love and approval? Yeah. And can you give that yeah. numbness? Can you give that numbness some love and approval? Yes. And more love and approval. Yes. And that fear. Yes. Yes. And yes. Now you're an experienced releaser, so I can feel this energy going quickly. Yes. So, so let's let it continue as as you will. But I'm going to shift the focus here for a second. So mm -hmm. when you look at your parents. Mm hmm. How do you feel about them right now in that picture? Oh. And not as a young girl, but like right now, present time as an adult? Present time as an adult. Uh, super sad. A lot of separation wow. in there, a lot of confusion. Yeah. Compassion, but just, I mean, yes. we really broke, we broke, we broke it up, shutting down our hearts on each other a while ago. <laughs> Oh, I, I feel that so yeah. deeply when you say that. Yeah. yeah. I feel it so deeply. So can you welcome up all those feelings? Yeah. Yeah. Just love them. Be with them. Yeah. Yes. Let them go. Yeah. Yeah. Just let them go some more. Yes. Yeah. Let them go some more. Oh, yes. 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 Let them go some more. Yes. Just feelings, right? Just feelings. Oh, yeah. Just feelings. And can you yeah. find, as you let those go, can you find some deep love for your parents? Yes. Yes. And how does that feel when you love your parents? It just feels oneness. And oneness. Feels like, yeah. Connected, yeah. So... As a seven-year-old girl, mm -hmm. when you were being shut down, mm -hmm. numb, and scared, mm -hmm. how did that seven-year-old girl look at your parents, at her parents? Oh, as, as, as a threat, and that I was gonna, they were going to kill me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. can you welcome up that lacking safety feeling? Yes, that, yes. That in, insecure feeling? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Could you just welcome it up? Let that go. Yeah. Let it go some more. Yeah. Yeah. Let it go some more. <coughs> yes. And could you allow that seven-year-old part of yourself to be a pure, whole, innocent, free spirit? Yes. Yeah, you can, can't you? You know, you can't you can't yeah. change what happened, but you can change your picture of it. Yes, yes. Yeah. I, can, I can see her as a strong light being back then, yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course yeah. she was. Yeah, of yeah. Of she yeah. was. Yeah. And can you <laughs> see yourself right now in the same way? Yes. Yes. And with this being the strong, light, freely expressing being, fully empowered, yeah. can you look back at your childhood, the whole picture of it, of yeah. dominating strict Republican parents and just yeah. get a picture of it, whatever that looks like, whatever that feels like. Yeah. And just poof. Let the whole thing dissolve. Yeah. yeah, you can do that. Yeah. 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 And is it okay with you to go for a moment into the very depth of your heart and look at that past the same way? Mm hmm and full of love. Yeah. Yeah. 
And from this place, is it okay with you if you make a decision going forward that when challenges come up, instead mm -hmm. of referring to that past picture and that past story, yes. you're going to refer to the depth of your heart, to your being. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You see? Yeah. This, this is how we make a big jump, a big leap. Absolutely. Yeah. Get it? And is it okay if it becomes a habit? Yes. Yes. That this becomes your natural way of interacting with the challenges of the world to see them from the depth of your heart or from yes. your beingness. Yes. Yeah. What okay. a good. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And is it okay if occasionally you jump back into referring back to your old stuff? <laughs> yeah, the conditioned responses. The conditioned responses, right? <laughs> That's right. Okay. That's and you are. go, oh, mm -hmm. my conditioned responses are here to remind me that I'm not in my heart. Totally. Totally, right. Mm -hmm. So can you mm -hmm. look at this big body of conditioned responses you have yes. as a great tool for you. Permanent, you know, ever ready reminder to move into your heart. Amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so could you just love it, this, look at this conditioned, this big, huge mountain range of conditioned responses <laughs> and, just, and just love them all? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and can you also see in these conditioned responses that there's a lot of very practical wisdom? Yeah. You know, when you're when we're dri uh -huh. when we're driving our car and suddenly a ball comes across the street, we go, "Oh, a kid may be following." That's conditioned response, isn't it? Right. Okay, so 90% of the time, we're going to be using this conditioned responses, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. And we want it, you know, t turn left, we want to turn the turn signal. That's a conditioned response. You know, we, okay, so could you view this huge mountain range of conditioned responses as a great friend, a great ally? a great resource for you. Oh, that's really good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, yes. Good. And all yeah. the same, when challenges come, we want to refer back to our hearts to respond. Yes. Okay? So how are you feeling right now? I am feeling just so grounded in my heart and connected and just so much more loving and quiet and it's amazing. <laughs> we'll call that a, we'll call that a gain. We'll call that a gain, baby. All right. <laughs> thank thank you very much, Bobby. Thank you, Stephen. Okay. Really appreciate when people speak up here. We have one more. Area code six four one nine one nine. Hi, Stephen. It's Jessica. Hey, Jessica. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so I've had something kind of percolating um, around me this week, and I've wanted to work with you, but I didn't really know the angle until I got in the queue, and then I just started to have, like, a panic attack, and a lot of fear came up. And... Um, this work with the chakras, uh, I recognized a couple days ago working with the second chakra energy um, uh, and maybe even last week something you were working with made me realize that I have a, I don't know if fear is the right word, but there's a block in intimacy during this time. And mm -hmm. I think it's, it's bringing up some past trauma as far as feeling, and it's related to the throat chakra. Every, everything you've said today applies between the relationship between these two chakras. 
where there's been an, an inappropriate, what I, I'll say for, so I don't go into story, inappropriate um, sexual expression from a male, which, and then kind of a threat of don't speak up or you're going to be in trouble. Yes. And so, and I was also, I was a very boisterous, exuberant, uh, joyful child, and I was very loud. And I was, my dad was a professor, and very often if he was working, I was completely clueless. He would be, like, yelling at me to, Jesse, be quiet. So all of this together is just kind of bubbled to a head. Okay. Okay. And it, so. it, it relates to the loving the coronavirus because the what I'm experiencing personally and then what's in the collective consciousness, it's so overwhelming that I'm having trouble connecting emotionally to have intimate int- intimacy uh, with any, any, any family members or my partner. Gotcha. So, thank you, by the way, for the way you express this is what so many people feel. You know, that something has gone on, they can think of this and this and this and this, but they can't quite articulate what it is, right? But it's just a general morass and boom, this is perfect. This is perfect. So... Let's just, um, first of all, can you let go of trying to figure out what the cause is of your current situation? Yeah. Yeah. Your mind doesn't know, does it? No. It just likes to make stuff up. Right. <laughs> right. You got all this stuff going on. Your, your mind doesn't really know what's going on, and I, I don't know either. Okay? We just have stuff coming up. So, could you give yourself some love and approval for allowing all this stuff to come up? Yeah. And even if your mind doesn't know and can't articulate it perfectly, could you give your mind some love and approval? Yeah. Yeah. Could you give your mind some more love and approval? Yeah. Yeah. We actually go into a lot of peace once we give the mind love and approval. I could hear that in your voice. Could you give your mind some more love and approval? Yeah. Yeah. So, and would it be okay with you if as we work together, whatever energies come up are the energies that come up? Yeah. That's okay, isn't it? Because we don't know, we don't yeah. quite know where we're going, do we? Mm-hmm. So... Let's go back to let's go back to your childhood, okay? Yes. Uh huh. And you being this loud, boisterous, joyful child, and your father having to work and telling you, "Keep quiet, shut up, Jesse, shut up, Jesse," whatever the phrase was. Mhm. And when you go back to a memory like that, how do you feel? Ah. Uh. Sad and dejected, you know, deflated. Yes. Yes. So, could you welcome up that sad, deflated, dejected feeling? Yeah. Yes. And just be with it. Just be with it. And do you like that feeling? Not particularly. Yeah. But on the other hand, it's also not terrible, terrible, is it? No. No. So is it okay with you if you have a wide range of experiences and emotional feelings? Yeah. Yeah. So could you just appreciate that as a seven-year-old 
I'm making that up, however old you were. Um, as a young child, you had enough emotional development to feel a wide array of feelings. Yes. You weren't so shut down, were you? No. No. So could you just give yourself some love and approval and give these feelings some love and approval? Yes. Yeah. And is it so bad to have a childhood where you have a lot of wonderful, joyful times and sometimes where you get put pushed down, shut down, that sort of thing? Is that so bad to have a, a childhood like that? No. It's not really, is it? Mm-mm. Could you give your childhood some love and approval? Yes. And more love and approval? Yes. And more love and approval? Yes. And could you allow even more of this energy of being shut down, dejected, sad to come up? Yes. And even more still? Yes. And does that show up as a sensation in your body or is it something in your field? Um, yeah, I, I'd say um, uh, I have pain in my second chakra, the solar plexus, and the heart. And, nice. you know, just tightness kind of across my uh, upper chest, like uh, with my Great. shoulders, across my shoulders. Great. Can you, fabulous. It's nice to have that clarity. So can you just feel those sensations, that pain? Yeah. Yeah. And just, can you just sort of breathe into it? Be with it? Yeah. Yeah, not try and do anything to it. Just let it be there. Can you allow it to be just energy that wants to be healed? Yeah. Yeah, it just wants to come up and be healed. Could you just let it be there? Yeah. Yeah. And what's happening to that energy now, to that pain? Um, I'd say it's shifting, it's becoming more diffuse. Good. Good. Could you let that continue some more? Yeah. Just by loving it, being with it. that energy diffuses, do you find yourself becoming more integrated, tighter, you know, clearly defined, or do you find yourself more open and flowing? Could be either way. I'm just curious. What's, what's your experience? Um, I think toward more open, like Good. there's a, a softening. Nice. And I, I'm, I'm becoming aware that I had been, you know, resisting the pain and the contraction yes. prior to, you know, us getting to this point. Yes. Good. Perfect. So is it okay with you if you allow your whole body to soften? If you're going in that direction, let's go in that direction. Yes. And soften some more. Yeah. And more. Yeah. And is it okay with you? Is it safe for you to be soft? Yeah. Good. Was there some hesitation in that? 
yeah, my mind wanted to say no, 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 because that that's what got me in contraction is kind of a rejection of my feminine power. Yes. And I think the whole yes. coronavirus thing has exasperated it, you know. Yes. Because uh, it put me in defense. Good. And I so don't want to be in defense. Good. Could you welcome up that insecure, unsafe feeling? Yes. And just be with that. Love that feeling. And just honor it, love it, be with it. Yeah. And you notice when you love, you honor, you be with it, you're really being soft. Yeah. And, and that unsafe feeling is dissolving. Yeah. Is it okay with you if you use your common sense to protect yourself rather than this warning signal of being unsafe? Yeah. Yeah. And is it okay with you if you really cherish and love this unsafe feeling as a warning signal but that you're free to let it go immediately when it shows up? Can you say that again? Yeah. So when that unsafe feeling comes up any time, is it okay for you to see it as a friend and then just let it go immediately for having delivered its message. Ah, uh, yeah. So it becomes yeah. a message bearer rather than something that runs your life. Yeah. That's okay, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Of course that's it is. Great. Yeah. That's great. So every time that unsafe feeling comes up, you just go, oh, thank you for that information. And then let it go and use your common sense. Yeah. So... Is it okay with you if you become even softer, Jessica? Yeah. Softer and more open? Yeah. Yeah. Now, when you say it that way, it feels like you're safe as you're soft and open. Yeah. Yes. Now, you mentioned an experience that happened that left you unsafe. Are you... Are you willing to go there? Yeah. Okay, that sound, sounds a tentative yes, but I, I know you're very <laughs> courageous. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So is it okay with you if you recognize that at this point, that's merely a memory? Yeah. It's not happening to you right now, right? Right. Right. It might feel like that, but it's just energy. Yeah. Okay. So going there, what was your experience when it happened or right after it happened? What did you feel? Um, well, the first word that comes to my mind is terrified. Terrified. Good. So can you... Check to see if you like feeling terrified. <laughs> no, I do not. No, you don't. Yeah. I, you know what happened there, Jessica? Just so you know what I'm doing. I was going to say, could you welcome up terrified? And I go, no, I'm not going to ask that question. This is where, <laughs> you, when it was really big energy, you want to work around the edges of it. Like, do you like it? Okay? Yeah. And, and just okay. so you know, I was working on that while you were working with the previous two people. So it has sure. softened a little bit. So when you'd ask them, can you welcome that up, I kind of was working with that energy. Great. So you don't like that feeling terrified. Could you just welcome up that not liking a feeling? Yeah. That not, that not liking feeling and just let that go. Yeah. And could you let it go some more? Yes. And when you have a really strong reaction to something, a really powerful blast of energy, would you be willing to realize that there's a really big 
experience for you to grow from there? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So for whatever reason, you got it in a really big short burst there, right? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is it safe for you to look at terror itself right now? Yeah. Good. So can you welcome up that terror? Yeah. And really, that's just really intense fear, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and you've dealt with fear many times, haven't you? Sure. Yeah. Would it be okay with you if you allowed yourself to be bigger than that feeling of terror? Mm, yeah. Yeah, could you allow yourself to get even bigger still? Yeah. And bigger still? Yeah. And bigger still? Yeah. And for everyone else on the phone, could you allow yourself to get bigger than whatever your big trauma might be? So from this wide, expanded place where you are right now, Jessica, are you bigger than this terror? Definitely, yes. Way bigger, aren't you? Oh, yeah. So with something like terror, where do you feel that in your body? Do you feel it in your body? Yeah. Right right now, it's, it's up like interesting in my lymph nodes like under my arms or the top of my chest in front of my shoulders perfect perfect so would it be okay with you as we're talking about lymph if you just let water wash through all those sensations mm. lymph fluid wash through all those sensations and just wash them away yeah Yes, and just let it wash away some more. Yeah. Yeah, wash away some more. Yeah. Ooh, I, you know, what's coming to me is you may find a, a big shift in your health with this, by the way. Yeah, that's you know, great. Some deep trauma like this, and suddenly these are channels in our body where we can open up now. Yeah. Could you this let it go out great. some more? Yes. And what's happening to that big bundle of terror as you do that, as you wash it away? Well, it it already, like when you asked if I was bigger than that, it felt mm -hmm. like it was a pin, uh, like a little dot in the distance. Nice. You know? And, and just, uh, it, it's just, water is just you know it's just so cleansing and soothing and healing and it feels like this is a new technique for me when there's a trigger from the environment that pushes any of the fear button that I can just use this as a technique you know yes. whether it's light or water whatever liquid light any combination yeah. thereof yeah I can use that as a as a as a tool to Good. be in my body and allow the experience instead of resisting and judging Good. the experience. So come back. Oh, I'm so grateful. This is yes. so wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> so good. I just want to make sure that the terror is really gone here. Yeah, there's and and this is so great and such a big win because I I don't know where I heard it, but like maybe a year or two ago, some I heard the phrase, practice curiosity instead of judgment. And I've had the intention to do that, but I feel like it just clicked into place. Like you gave me a tool to do that. Because now instead of feeling judgment about the fear and the terror and any past experience and the, the quote-unquote need for healing, I feel curious. And interested okay. and like kind of excited instead of all the you know negative stuff that I had. All right, I'll I'll take that as We're a complete. victory for you. <laughs> okay, yes. okay. Thank you, Stephen. I appreciate you so much. 
Thank you, Jessica. Thank you very much. Okay, so it's very late. I have one person in the queue. I'm going to take this person, but I totally understand that people need to get off and get on with your with your daily life. So area code, this will be the last person, 603 in the queue. Hello? Area code 603? Ah, so maybe they just unmuted themselves by accident. There we go. Oh. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Who's this? Hi. This is Cheryl. And uh, when I listen to you, I keep it um, muted on this end, too, just so there's no mistake. Gotcha. Um, and I know it's late, and so I'm not going to go into any depth. I basically want to say um, thank you so much for doing this. Because the few days that I've listened, I resonate with everyone that you talk to. And I use the practice um, of loving whatever is coming up and letting it go. I mean, it's, it's really making a difference. And basically, I, um, I hit star six today because I wanted to get past the fear of doing this, but not have to do it for very long. Another day, I come back, and I'd like to work so with you. Well, um, everyone that you talk to is sort of going through the same thing that I am. And um, I tend yes. to be gathering information and being on the outside looking in, and that little piece of me is getting this. But the part of me that wants to commit is still kind of on the edge looking in. So um, another day I'd like to call back. but. I, I would love that. You'd be most welcome, Cheryl. And I'm so okay. happy that so much is happening for you with this. And it's okay to start small and easily and be safe. Okay? But yeah. Yeah. I, I love yeah. how you say, because you, you, you say it for everyone, that every, you, know, you resonate with every caller. That's how it is. We all do that. Yeah, oh, and each one helps me, and and I'm grateful for the people who have the courage to come in and talk to you, so that other people don't have to, but can still go through it at the same time. So, so, so Cheryl, I'm, I'm to, tomorrow or the next day, okay? We have a date. Yes, we do, because <laughs> this is like an avalanche. It's not starting small. When you open the door, the whole thing comes at you at once. So, yes. All um, right. Tomorrow will be the next day, but thank you. So so much for what you're doing. And what is the website that to go to to hear the other oh, ones that are already recorded? I can't find it. Oh, yeah. It's healingtheheartofamerica.org. And there's a place on there where I can listen to the other ones? A every one of them. Okay. All right. I'll try that. Healingtheheartofamerica.org. Yeah, I should be advertising that more. All right. Thank you so much, Cheryl. And I think what we'll do is... I have to th There we go. Unmuted everybody. All right. Thanks so much, Stephen. Yeah, thank you guys. Really thank appreciate you your being